Hello, everyone. I must welcome you all to Future You, Set Your Career Compass Right with Experts Insight. And I am Kalyani Majumdar, your host for today's webinar. Now, Future You has completed seven episodes so far. This is the eighth one. Uh, we have already co covered uh, careers in marketing, careers in finance. And today we are going to be covering careers in consulting with special focus on management consulting. So management consultant, so since we started with Future You series, we have been receiving a lot of uh, questions on from attendees, uh, even during our marketing sessions and finance sessions. So we want to be management consultants, how to become management consultants, what are the skill sets, when are you guys going to cover it? So this episode is exactly going to cover all that. So uh, as we already know, uh, management consultants make uh, some of the highest salaries in the professional world. And as you would expect with such a lucrative career, getting into the field is extremely difficult and obviously competitive. So uh, obviously, you know, you need to have the right connections at networking events. You need to also uh, nail each stage of the interview process. So we will find out in this episode how to become a management consultant, the job opportunities that are available. How do you even begin to plan your career? in consulting and uh, the skill uh, sets that are required to excel and more. And for this, we have our speaker today. She's a bright, young, talented consultant, Gur Simran Ahuja. Uh, she's a consultant with Bain and Company. She has uh, completed her MBA uh, from I'm Ahmedabad. Uh, she then interned at the sales and trading desks of Barclays Global Market in Singapore before choosing a career in consulting with one of the top management consulting firms in the world, Bain & Company. Welcome, uh, Gursimran Ahuja. Thank you so much for being here for this. Thank you, Thank you. Pleasure is all mine. So excited to be here. Thanks, Thank you. So let's start with your uh, career trajectory, right from your IIT Roorkee to I am Ahmedabad. How did you decide that, oh, I want to, do, uh, I want to pursue an MBA and then uh, from MBA to management consulting? Like you mentioned, I will just pick up from where you left off. I did my uh, engineering in electronics and communication along with a master's in wireless communication from IIT Roorkee. Toward the end of my engineering, I did have a job offer at that time, but I felt that, you know, uh, now is the time to you know, go all out, expand horizons out there. And I didn't want to restrict myself to a niche kind of uh, profession so early on, which is where I'm Ahmedabad came into the picture. Uh, took the cat, of course, and went to Ahmedabad. And I think it's the, it's the one campus in India that really gives you the exposure, really opens up your worldview to how industries work, how sectors work, how operations think about their decisions and all of it. And I think it's just, it's just two years of, you know, oh my God, does this stuff really happen? And it's just, it's just surreal. Uh, and of course, uh, my internship was a very intense kind of internship with the sales and trading desk uh, in Singapore. Um, and of course, there I realized it wasn't a finance whiz that I had expected I would be. Uh, and uh, chose a career in management consulting. And of course, two, I think more than two years down the line, here I am. And very, very confidently can say that, you know, none of these days in any of the two years have been at all similar from each other. So if you think about going back into my job on Tuesday, I can very confidently say that I'm going to have a day which I haven't had before. So, so far, so good. Actually, so far, so great. So, and uh, yeah, that's about it. Can you please take us through, uh, like, uh, what are the functions of a management consultant? What are the job duties? What exactly is management consulting? Let's take a step back, I would say, yeah. and start from the beginning. I think that, that would be the best way to do it. So what management consultants do uh, in actual practice is, if you think about a corporation, uh, and if you think about companies that are thousands of employees big and have multiple uh, complex, like, above uh, functions that they do, industries that they work in. Um, you, you think that the CEOs of these companies and CXOs of these companies uh, have, have to take decisions day in and day out. And where we step in is giving them the right inputs, giving them the right insights to equip them to take those decisions. Right. And in one word, that is what we do. Uh, and of course, like the gamut of industries is big out there. There's infrastructure, tech, retail, e-commerce, you name it. And 
we are, you know, um, there in the C-suite and we are advising executives on what their decisions should be. Of course, the decisions could be strategic. Do I enter into this market? Do I think about this business opportunity? If I think about it, how do I do it? Do I think about, you know, uh, cost reduction? If I had to do it, how do I do it? So these are the questions that any, any C-suite executive will face on a day-to-day -day basis. Of course, they have internal teams as well to do it, but where we step in is to provide a very outside-in, unfiltered view into, you know, this is what you should do. This is what it looks like. And a very uncut opinion. Uh, and basis of the advice that we give, uh, I think that's, uh, that's how CEOs decide and take inputs into consideration. And in one line, like that's what management consultants do. In terms of job duties, I think that's what a consulting team does. Oh. Within a consulting team, of course, the roles and the exact uh, on-ground deliverable for us varies across the board. It's different for different people on the team. And, you know, normally a team is like right from the partner to the junior consultant. All of them have like different roles to play in delivering the overall result for the client. Can you also speak a little bit about, you know, how exactly um, your, uh, what exactly is your uh, work as a consulting, as, an, as, a, as a consultant, how is your typical day? If, if we look at it that way, uh, picking up from where I left, I think everybody right from the partner to the junior consultant has a role to play when it comes to delivering these kinds of results for any client that we work with. And roles vary across the board. So for a partner, typically the role is to make sure that we are selling the main proposition to the client, communicating that this is where we're going to step in, this is how we're going to help you. And of course, steering the the team in the right direction and right. telling us that, okay, this is what is expected of us. For example, there's a CXO who wants to know whether India is a good enough market to enter or not. That's a big question, right? But that question has multi-layered connotations to it, so many nuances to it. Oh. And there's a manager on the team, of course, who holds the answer together. And then you have consultants who piece out each part of the analysis and oh. work with junior consultants to deliver it. So right now I am a consultant and I work on like one part of the problem. So for example, if you had to think about a market entry problem, oh. I would break it up into two parts and I would say, okay, I, if I had to enter a market, I'd probably look at what the market size is like, if India is even a lucrative enough market for an industry or not. And then I would think about, okay, if it is, then who are the competitors and who do I need to, you know, um, worry about when I'm entering into this market. So there'll be a market size work stream and there will be a share work stream. And that's where I step in. And we normally drive parts of the answer, which the manager, of course, pulls up and delivers it to the client. Mm -hmm. um, and if I talk about my job duties at a day-to-day -day level, like right. this yeah. is what it is, like thinking through problems and making sure that we are setting up analysis in the right way to deliver the right set of outcomes. So the, let's take a, a, take a question or two. Sure. Okay. Uh, so the first one is, why would a CXO who has domain knowledge of many years hire a consultant? Yeah. What does a consultant bring to the table that is more valuable than the experience of the client? And I think, uh, yes, very fair question. And I think absolutely frozen from what I said. See, uh, CXOs have domain knowledge of multiple years. And another thing that they have is vision. So they do have the vision of where they want to take this company in the next two to three years. And of course, what where we step in and where we bring in our expertise is you know, um, looking at the granular aspects of every market, looking at what every competitor is doing, how this industry is not currently, how this industry will pan out in the next two to three years. And of course, while CXOs are absolutely equipped to think about it, but if you think about the day of an average CEO, uh, it's running a business plus thinking about where to take it, right? Uh, and I think but they do have internal teams as well to do it. But but and a lot of a lot of firms out there have internal consulting teams as well. But an external opinion always helps because it's very unfiltered, very uncut, and we go into absolute granulars to say within this market there are ten different things that look lucrative. These three probably do not. I think that's the level of analysis that we do. Oh. The experts do have the mental prowess and the proficiency to you know act on those inputs. Probably take it a step further from where we give it to them. And that is where we step in. Second question is also kind of a little bit like, you know, exactly what you were talking about. So you can also cover a little bit about this. Do consultants work in an advisory role or do they help in seeing their advice being implemented and held yeah. accountable for it? Yeah, so yeah. while you were talking about it, can you also um, uh, 
tell us a little bit about like you you had a challenging situation maybe as a consultant and if you can just share a little bit about definitely that. let's do that uh, yeah so it's it's both actually uh, there are cases which tell you just to step in into an advisory role and give an answer and leave right there are cases and there are more cases like this as we see the industry you know sort of changing over time there are more cases where you know we advise and then we act on that advice as well and work with the clients to make sure that the results are implemented right so there are both kinds of cases and uh, the nature of the problem varies across the board uh and in terms of challenges i think the biggest challenge and although i would like to take a step back and say challenges are really opportunities so if i walk into my job one day and i realize there's no challenge i would be really worried so yeah challenges are really opportunities but if you think about it i think the biggest challenge is to go into an organization and have a recommendation which is probably different from how they were planning to do things get their buy in and work with them to implement it i think that's the biggest challenge because it's a people challenge you need to go in uh, to a to a to a corporation convince the people that okay this is probably not the right way to do it you probably need to see it from another angle and then after getting their buy in you make sure that whatever they're saying is implemented as well i think those are kind of the biggest challenges that we have uh, and of course uh, like that's what we are here for and uh, client skills are a big big part of what we do day in and day out so is it like uh, yeah. what i also i was talking about it even when um, i was introducing and i was talking about management consulting as a profession as a field uh, is it um, like your day to day is it is it extremely uh, Uh, challenging uh, and 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 is it like uh, you have to work for say 14 hours or something like that in a day or something like a work life balance is there any work life balance in this yeah in this uh, field in terms of challenging i think it's the good kind of challenges it's problems that you want in your life okay. uh, definitely um yes that and, and in terms of hours i think it's uh, it definitely on the higher side it's not a typical 9 to 5 right. profession where you close at 5 and the job is done for the day definitely not mm. it's slightly on the higher side but i think it's the number of hours that you put in is it's uh, if you look at it from a trade off perspective right. uh, if i evaluate my two years of being of course i've had a few long hours but at the same time i have been in board meeting i would never have imagined to be in i have talked to people i would never have imagined meeting if i was not part of this profession mm. um and there are days when it's just so surreal that i feel you know am i really giving this level of insights to people this senior you know yeah, these are the kinds of um this like realization moments that you get so no matter the number of hours that you're putting it's absolutely worth it uh and yes it's slightly on the higher side but it it just it just adds up at the end of the day and it pans out really well so uh does management consultants get to travel the world on an extensive basis <laughs> that's a question from uh yeah arun ba bhomek Yeah. In good days we did. In good. Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> so, I, I because yeah, in COVID nineteen, like in COVID nineteen days, yeah, that question yeah, is almost like more like you know, right? It's almost like wishful thinking. Oh, yeah, I yeah. travel, <laughs> which is like, yeah, but but yeah. generally, like obviously, you know, I'm I'm guessing, you know, we are not going to be uh, stuck in COVID nineteen forever. So once this is <laughs> over, yeah, keeping our fingers crossed. So once it's over, so do you? Uh, so if you are answering in that. sense uh, do you get to travel a lot like as a management consultant uh, yes we do get to travel a lot and by a lot we mean, we mean like monday uh, out flights and thursday in flights like that's the kind of travel we do i have lived literally two years of my life at an airport and an airplane and it's been it's been great fun to be very honest yeah. especially awesome. now when you think about it oh I especially now when i think about it yeah i would i would i would really love to have that life back <laughs> yeah So um okay there's another question uh we already covered uh, personal life as in the work life balance so um how much data analytics or business analytics is important as a skill uh, for a consultant very important but uh the job profile of a management consultant goes beyond it i think data analytics is probably only expected of you when you are an associate consultant or a senior associate consultant or maybe a little bit on my level but it, uh, but beyond that i think what is really important is what you do with that data and what you think about the data and how you translate the data into insights for someone to think about right uh, i think that is where a management consultant has the most role to play 
Of course, data analytics definitely helps, but uh, it it is better if you know how to read data, how to process it, how to get insights from it. I think that's what we do on a day to day basis. Um, and uh, analytics helps definitely at like when you're joining uh, that feel of numbers that knowing, you know, what exactly is it that you're seeing on a screen, if there are like 100 data points out there, making sense of it definitely helps, but not a critical like core job skill if you, if you mm -hmm. put it that way. Mm -hmm. So uh, most of our attendees are also MBA aspirants, CAT aspirants. So uh, it would really help them uh, if you can answer something like, you know, how do you, uh, how do you become a management consultant? And if you can also tell us about the career progression from say uh -huh. entry level to, you know, how, how do you go up? Definitely. And what's, what's that level? Yeah. Uh, all right. I think let's, let's, I'll take the second part of your question. Yeah. Okay. So if I had to lay down the career progression, it normally starts with associate consultant, which is where I began. Uh, and then there's a career trajectory, you become a senior associate, and then you become a consultant where I am right now. And after that, there's a trajectory which takes you to manager and then principal and then partner. And then partner is where, you know, all the selling happens, all the uh, negotiations happen. Right. Like that is the typical career progression. And this career progression normally spans a period of like eight to 10 years if you are really good at your job. Mm -hmm. uh, it takes eight to 10 years from, you know, going from, an associate consultant to a partner if you are on direct trajectory kind of that way. Um, and uh, in addition to that, of course, if you're, if you're like really good, you do it in eight sometimes, that also happens. Um, and uh, I think overall, uh, uh, I think going from associate consultant to partner, the job profile changes dynamically. Like uh, even if I look at like six, six months stretches of how I've been, like the skill set expected of me and the skill set that I developed in every six months that I was there at was a stark difference. There was a sea level of change going from one, one trajectory to another. Mm -hmm. And it definitely, definitely uh, is a profession that squeezes a lot of years of knowledge into like one power packed kind of career trajectory. You have to get at it um, right, right from the very beginning. Uh, but I think it really helps uh, in the job market out there as well. If you're looking for other opportunities, it sets you up really, really well. Um, is an MBA compulsory to get into management consulting? Yeah. All point. right. So yeah, so your question on like, how, what, what will it take yeah. to become a management consultant? Correct. Is an MBA compulsory? Uh, not necessarily. Of, uh, I think it's uh, like, I, I speak for strategy consultants and MBBs when I say right. that, yeah. you yeah. know, uh, normally we now we have expanded our gamut of hiring because we need so many consultants and there are so many MBAs that you can hire in a year. Uh, we have expanded it to uh, undergrads as well. And by undergrads, I mean like the, the top engineering colleges, the top, let's say IITs. And then it has also been expanded to a few commerce colleges as well, like the Sri Ram, the world and, um, you know, uh, St. Stephen's and all of those colleges as well are under our purview right now. What are the benefits for being a management consultant? Uh, key skills and aptitude. Mm -hmm. I mean, how do you even know that you know? Okay, um, just because I want to be a management consultant doesn't mean that I have the skills to. So, if you don't have the yeah. skills at, yet, you want to be one. Then, how do you work on towards yeah. it? And what are the skill sets you can polish? Yeah. Let me let me try and make this very relevant because yeah. I think it's it's uh it, it's also like what skills do you need and what do I do to get there? I think that's right. that's also a question that we need to answer. So I think skill sets. If I look at it from the point of view of a consultant who's like just joining, like an associate consultant or a junior consultant, right. there are two or three big things that you need to have. One is I need to know that you know if if I am hiring someone for that particular position. I need to know that you are great with numbers and you get a feel of numbers. You're analytically strong. Like there's a foundational level of analytics that you need to have for sure. How do we look at that when it comes from a resume perspective? If you if you if you've been great in academics, definitely shows that you know you and if your academics is like engineering or it's maths course, etc., definitely helps. If you've participated in like some Olympiads that give a sense of, you know, you, you've dealt with numbers in the past and you've been comfortable with it. So yes, a feel of numbers, uh, analytical strength is absolutely important. The second one, if I had to look at it is disciplined excellence, if I had to put it that way. So you need to get behind things. Uh, it, your CV should be a marker of the fact that you, you know, 
there are one or two things that you've been really passionate about and it, it could be not your studies like if you could manage with like average grades and if you have something stellar on your cv mm-hmm. for example if you were a sports person for 6 years but you've gotten behind things and you've seen things to fruition it's not that you picked up 100 things and left all of them in, in between right. you picked up a few things you picked up two or three things in your life and you've really taken them and really made something out of it mm-hmm. and that is what is really really important and the third element because a lot of our work involves talking to clients on a day in and day out basis you need to have that minimum level of you know professional presence and charm to you know make sure that you are developing that kind of client relationships when it comes to it how do we get that i think elective positions are great if you're a college president if you've been in college politics that helps a lot that means you've de- you've dealt with your fair share of people you've talked to them you've convinced them i think these are the tiny things that we look out for uh, and uh, of course it it does it doesn't matter that you know uh, you don't have them right now there are always opportunities to build on that set of uh, uh, build on that set of skill sets and i think that's that's how people sort of think about it there's a question um could you please tell uh, does mbbs shortlist uh, also freshers at iams uh, as they won't have a good profile compared to people with work ex <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and also yeah. there was another question that you can probably answer uh, alongside this as in for iam is it important like you know to be i mean if if someone is a fresher yeah. is it difficult to uh, be selected or not hmm. that is another question That's, so yeah you can two yeah. take both the questions together maybe perhaps sure yeah I think yeah I'm a, I'm a fresher and I was in a cohort yeah. uh, that had 33% freshers when uh, hiring took place so yeah definitely freshers get selected if you think about it I think um if you if you compare a work ex profile to a freshers profile of course a person with work ex has like a little more number of years to compensate for and show some extra skill sets of course they'll have they'll probably working in a profession which is extremely relevant or even in a tech profession so they do have that in, like a little window of time more to exhibit the skill sets that is needed but uh, i think that doesn't deter a fresher at all from you know applying to and getting selected for a management consulting position of course you need to have good academics for sure and if you have a good like a record of good positions of responsibility or if you've picked up extra curriculars and have really delivered them I think these are, these are the things that really really help. Somebody somebody has also asked you. You did mention it in your career trajectory, but if maybe a little bit more in detail, as in how did you decide that uh, consulting is what you would like to yeah. uh, pursue? I think it all boiled down to the fact that I was a fresher. That was a big big factor into you know uh, taking that decision because for me. Uh, like i said i had that opportunity i had an opportunity to go into a niche profession at the end of my engineering uh, sort of uh, years as well but didn't choose to do it because i wanted like a world out there i wanted to see what you know the industries have to offer I wanted to see what's out there for me to you know explore and consulting in terms of the skill sets that it gives you for unit time the exposure that it gives you for unit time uh it's a great great starter into any sector that you want to get into so if you do 2 3 years of consulting it explores you to a bunch of problems a gamut of people so many sectors and i think it's it's a, it's just a great way to you know develop multiple skill sets in a very short span of time so i think that is the biggest reason why i chose this career right i've heard that consulting uh, shortlists are difficult I'm pursuing my engineering from Mumbai University with great acads. I have got a job at Z's Associates Management Consulting Firm. Do you think I should take the job and then do my MBA? Like, could my experience help me with the shortlisting of consulting firms at a BC? So I think great question and something that I also dabbled in uh, for a while. Yes, I think uh, the shortlists are pretty tight, and uh, I can say from my experience because I got it one time and I got it didn't get it the other. So I didn't get an MBA shortlist when I was sitting for my interns, okay. but I did get all three when I was sitting for my finals. So I think uh, yes, they are tight for sure. But when it comes to having the right set of experiences, if ZS Associates is you know where uh, you want to go to. it's a great form tells you that you know you've had some kind of exposure even if it's pharma consulting it's some kind of consulting experience that you've had you've had the experience of 
you know, uh, looking at how industries work and how they take their decisions. Um, I would definitely do that first and then try and go for an MBA because uh, that kind of like molds you into one direction will strengthen your worldview about consulting as well. Maybe you say, oh, I don't like it. Or maybe you say, you know, this is what I'm made for. Mm -hmm. so it could be either. But yeah, do, do take that opportunity. And then once you go into an MBA as well, it will be a much more enriched MBA from that perspective. What's the scope in consulting for someone from a pharma background? Do we necessarily have to be in healthcare consulting or can an MBA uh, open up other consulting opportunities? Trust me, the, the kind of profiles that we have, yeah. it's across the board. We have doctors working at Bain, like people who had MBBS initially and now have joined Bain. Uh, so consulting is one profession. And trust me, in India, the gamut of like undergrads that we have is very few. Like we don't have... Uh, a lot of people going in for unconventional majors like philosophy and history, etc. But if I look at the Bain pool world over, it's people who have done majors that I probably hadn't even heard of before. Mm -hmm. So it's it's any and every sector can give you that you know leverage, provided you show that you know you have stuck to things, you have excelled at things before, you have a decent level of academics, and you have some spikes on your CV that really, literally, they sort of make you stand apart and of course like if you have an unconventional major by all means go for it i think that's that's your first differentiator and if you've done really well in that direction that's like really hitting it out of the park if we talk about a dream company like bain and company or mckinsey what is the common thing you found in their interview process or eligibility while sitting for uh for interviews so basically uh, you know what kind of a in, maybe uh, uh, you can probably talk a little bit about your interview, the interview process sure. for being in company probably. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think uh, if you think about it, so uh, a lot of information about what, how much disciplined excellence you've shown in the past comes from, uh, comes from your CV, right? And that, that's the first level of filter that any firms have. Mm -hmm. What do they test when they come into an interview is to give you one or two case in points just to check how, how well you think on your feet, how you know, uh, analytically, okay, you are, if I, if I throw a problem at you, will you be like, oh, I need like 20 days to think about it? Or will you come up with a solution in like the 20 minutes that we talk to you? And of course, that level of, you know, are you, are you a guy that a consulting firm would want to put in front of their clients or not? Uh, do you have that kind of communication skills uh, going in? Uh, a, a general level of, you know, how to talk, sit, have, have conversations. I think that's extremely important. So these two things are largely tested. The interview process is very, very simple. It's just three or four odd interviews with like managers or partners. And it's just case interviews. They give you, give you a business problem and tell you to think through it. If you were the person in that situation, how would you solve that problem? So if a client is thinking about entering India, if a client is thinking about cutting their costs, how would you think about it? And trust me, if you do need like some level of basic prep for it. But even if I, I had to ask you this question, a lot of people out there, and I'm, I'm sure like the mental horsepower in this entire Zoom call is uh, absolutely right there. If I had to put that question to you, I'm sure most of you would come up with like really commendable answers at this point itself without even prepping for it. So I think all of us have it in us. It's just that we need to show it. We need to like really get behind things and deliver results before we, you know, go in uh, to that interview room. Uh, does MBB hire from new and baby IMs? This is uh, something that a lot of students are worried about. Like, uh, yeah. I'm going so, from baby IM, not yet. Uh, that's a blanket no mm -hmm. for now. Uh, and have, of course, like with COVID, it's not, it's not getting better. Right, right, uh, yeah. Just don't see it like, happening in the next one or two years. But uh, new IM, I think we've started. Uh, it's, it's been a smaller hiring pool. It's been, the numbers have been low, but definitely like considering it moving in that direction because we do need the, we do need the mental horsepower. We do need the consultants. Yes. So definitely, I think uh, you should not consider yourself to be at a disadvantage, even if you're from a new IM. Definitely. Ben. So you were talking about, um, uh, when we were talking about the interview process, you also spoke about uh, the importance of having a good profile. How do you build a profile as in for, so our attendees are mostly now, um, MB aspirants, CAT aspirants. Mm -hmm. So what can they do now to build up their profiles so that yeah. you know they can excel in this field, as in they can also stand out, stand apart from the rest? Mm -hmm. So I think in terms of what can we do now, of course, depends on the kind of situation you're in. Like, are you working? Are you a student, et cetera? 
but i think i would say uh, depending on how much constraints or how much can you push yourself um if you're if you're a student definitely definitely like double down on your academics make sure you have that good academic profile going for you mm-hmm. and pick a few things that you like i think uh, i think as 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 part of the indian education system we don't normally think a lot about like lot beyond academics but i think it's very important that if you pick a few things that you like it could be it could be sketching it, it could be a hobby that you like it could be sports but if you choose it and if you really deliver it i don't know if you have that kind of time right now or not but if you do and if you're in an undergrad and thinking about consulting say in the next 3 to 4 years rather than in the immediate future why don't you do this like why don't you pick up a few things that you really like and make something out of it i think that that's something that we like sort of underestimate uh other than that i think it's it really helps um if you uh, pick up a few business case competitions if if your college is into that i'm sure a lot of a lot of institutes do provide that kind of uh, opportunity and exposure so pick up a few business case contests i think that the other they are also simulations of what we do on a day to day basis will give you a sense of you know what exactly is it that businesses have to offer so i think that is that is something that you can do in a limited runway but yeah if you think about if you think about consulting from say a four to five years kind of timeline like do pick up things that you like in life and like you really really build on them i think we we have way too much time in our lives than we think we do mm-hmm. um, and so uh, we really need to structure our lives a lot better so do your academic do great at your job like really uh, double down on the things that you are supposed to do and then do a little bit more of things that you really like to do so along with a good resume for uh, especially for interview processes with uh, the big the big uh, companies like bain and company do you need to also prepare a pitch um no you do no. not okay. your resume and you are your pitch so okay. that is yeah i think no no extra sort of pitching needed in that direction it's okay. just not enough to know what exactly your resume is communicating okay yeah. so um what is the uh, what is the impact of covid-19 now on consulting firms as in like future uh, of management consulting and uh, what is a how do you think will be the what is your read on this situation i mean yeah. how the job opportunities will be for management consulting and for right consulting as ever. For <laughs> right <laughs> as ever uh, yeah so business is not going anywhere it's just a different way of doing businesses we are going to approach it differently there are going to be new income streams coming up there are going to be new sectors opening up new ways of you know capitalizing on the new habits that we have built during covid uh and it's the same firms that are doing it or there are in there are incumbents who are obviously doing it and there are new firms who have come up who are uh you know who built these new business models but business will continue and as long as business continues we are in there uh so as uh, very bright i don't think uh, and hiring can be impacted in any way whatsoever not even in the short term i would say uh so yeah prospects are looking absolutely bright i completed my engineering and working as an engineer for the past one year in a top us firm i don't find much time to prepare for cat but i'm truly interested in management consulting is it possible for me to take uh, to make a career switch and get into such top firms without an mba it's difficult it's difficult unless you have been a real star at what you're doing and you are really uh, a your role is like not entirely tech and you're not just coding you are doing a role which is like a product management e kind of role or it does give you that exposure into business insights as well probably might happen but it's a long shot to be very honest like take the cat i think it, it, oh, cat is also a bigger battle and a bigger devil than we make it out to be you just need to take out your weekends just need to take out that one hour of netflix from your schedule every day and i think oh. uh should be fine yeah cat is not as big a deal as it is made out to be there's another question uh, if we aren't not, if, if we are not able to make up to oh if we are not able to get into one of the top iams then how can we get into one of the top consulting firms is it possible why not why not, why not? so there's something called i think that what this one trajectory which i haven't talked about is this bain capability network or mckinsey knowledge center so they have an analytics heavy kind of setup built right in parallel mm-hmm. uh, which supports cases all over the world it supports bain india supports uh, like bain constructs all over the world I think uh, over there the entry requirement is not that strict but you do need to spend like 2 or 3 years and then you can 
enter into consulting as well. Uh, I think that's one trajectory which you can obviously consider. Uh, but other than that, I think if you had to think about coming through like the normal route, definitely does need a little bit of um, support in terms of the kind of uh, institute that you come from. Really, uh, sort of makes a stronger pitch. But definitely, if you do want to come in through that trajectory as well, I think a lot of people have done that and have benefited from it as well. So can do it. There's another one. Uh, I'm joining a consulting company next month. What are the skills that I should develop before I join and once I join? Oh, in a month. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Don't worry about it. I think uh, uh, I, your job will take care of enough and more skills for you. Don't mm -hmm. don't absolutely go into thinking you have to be like star from day one. And a, a month is like a very short amount of time to build on any skills. Just just relax for a bit. Get into that mode of you know I'm gonna learn the most I can from this job. Get into that group, and I think uh, do some research on the company that you're joining, on the people that you're going to work with, the kind of industries they support. I think that's that's nothing more prep than you can do than you know making that sea change, which I think your job will definitely take care of. That. Piece. Although you did speak about the skills needed, uh, but there are a lot of questions still coming in about you know skills. So can you okay. just divide like the soft skills, like maybe top three soft skills that you need, top three uh, hard skills that you need. And if you do not have either of those, what do you do to develop those? Sure. Let's do that. All right. So I think in terms of the top three hard skills, um, yeah. let, let me just be very objective about it. Sense mm -hmm. of numbers, analytical prowess is extremely disciplined excellence. You need to have done things which you have like really seen through and you've really followed through on things in life. And uh, third one, if I had to put it is like, probably insights or if you have that kind of like raw business sense. So if you read an article in the Economic Times, do you just read it or do you think about, you know, oh, no, oh like there's something in it for you that you oh, think like beyond the article and you have that sense of, you know, taking that next step. I think these are the three hard skills that you really need to have. In terms of soft skills, I think number one, you need to be, you need to be a good communicator. And, uh, yeah, and of course, like that, that also comes with time, but you need to build on, you know, the fact that, you know, you need to be, uh, uh, you need to communicate your ideas because at the end of the day, it's not just building insights, it's also convincing our clients to, uh, you know, take, take them up and implement them with us. And if we're not going to put communicators and we don't tell them what we think we are thinking, and then it's just a lost cause at the end of this. So yeah, good communication, presentation. Yeah. And a little bit of team skills also in the So you need to be a person who is okay working in as part of a team, who's okay working with four or five people. Yeah. Uh, you don't need to be an extrovert to do it, but uh, you definitely need to be someone who is okay, like being around people and taking inputs from them, uh, building them into the kind of work that you're doing. So you need to have that active communication and camaraderie going. So I think a little bit of team skills and people skills obviously. There's a very interesting question. What did you learn in your B school? Basically, what did you learn at I am Ahmedabad that helped you uh, build up your skills, uh, that helped you in um, management consulting? Definitely. I think there are two parts to it. One is I am Ahmedabad in the classroom, and one is I am Ahmedabad outside of the classroom. So I think in the classroom, obviously, we have a bunch of courses that give us a sense of, you know, how have businesses thought about their problems in the past? How have businesses strategized? How did Apple think about their strategy when they started off? How did a business develop? How did Flipkart think? So that's one part of the learning, and that's very core learning. You, you are sitting in a classroom, you're learning from the best professors in the world out there. That's learning on paper definitely helps. I think the one thing that really helps beyond that is learning beyond the classroom. And I think I am the one one campus that definitely does it for you. And I, I can vouch for the others as well. Uh, I think that learning beyond the classroom is about, you know, if you're working in a study group, are you able to work with people, uh, five people and like build one project out of it or build one output? Like, are you, are you the person who takes in the inputs into consideration? Uh, are you the person who sees things through? Like it gives you opportunities for leadership. So if there are so many clubs out there on campus, are you a part of it? Are you involved in, you know, uh, one or two aspects that you're passionate about and driving them? It gives you exposure into real world business. Now. Like I have seen Raghuram Rajan on campus, people of uh, multiple, you know, multiple sectors who've made it in life. And you really, like it gives you that motivation day in and day out that I am a part of that legacy which produce people like this. And you're automatically pushed in that direction to say, okay, I want to be, you know, kind of where they are right now. 
So it, it does a lot for you. It, it opens up your worldview into a different, uh, like trust me, I have seen the difference because I went in uh, probably not knowing that much about business. I, I, I used to open economic times and think, you know, all right, this, this, I don't, this doesn't cut it. I don't know what I'm reading. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, beyond that, when I, when I got from IMA, this is, this is how my worldview changed as to, you know, mm-hmm. I'm looking at things that I'm thinking about them as well. I have, a, I have an opinion about everything that I read out there. Right. Uh, so I think it really builds that business sense in you to think about problems, to think about organizations. And it's not just you as a passive uh, sort of spectator, right. 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 Small, but you're an active contributor. Right. I think that, that is the change that happens. How relevant is uh, finance and management consulting? Uh, can I become a management consult- a consultant after BSc finance? Also, uh, which are the um, companies that I should be looking at if finance is what my strength is? So finance is extremely relevant, by the way. If you've done finance, I think I know for a fact that you've looked at enough and more of your share of numbers and you've done well. Uh, so I think finance really helps. And uh, if I had to like put my finger on one thing that really helped me get my shortlist was that sales and marketing role, markets role in uh, buckets, because it, it, it told the recruiters at some point that, you know, this person has looked at numbers and has felt comfortable with it. And it, I had that analytical kind of foundation that we can build on. Um, but you need to write, obviously, like be good at your degree or whatever course or whatever specialization you're pursuing. Mm-hmm. Finance is not like your key sort of strength area or it's not something that you like or not something you want to do. Definitely management consulting is an option for you. And there's a gamut of careers out there, I think, which really, really help. You can definitely go into, uh, and trust me, like even within finance, we have like 10 different careers that you can definitely consider. I'm sure like if you've given thought to all of them and you've said that, okay, and finance is not it then definitely like go in for management consulting, choose a marketing role if, if that if works for you. There are a lot of firms out there that have for general management kind of roles, like they give you a part of their business and you are running teams for them. That There are firms like Tata and other several group, like big conglomerates in India that do offer that kind of specialization. And tech is always there. I think tech is really big everywhere. So why don't you consider like those kind of specializations as well? But yeah, finance is great. If you've done finance, it really tells something about, you know, the kind of work that you've done in the past. So yeah, so a lot of finance. Okay, and it's the same also for, uh, somebody was also asking about certification. Is there any certification course that one can do probably while in the school or even after or before that might help them uh, building up their profile for management consulting? I, I get this a lot, by the way. Yeah. Uh, so certification, <laughs> certification <definitely>, Yeah. <laughs> um, short answer, no. Okay. If you have a month in your life that you really want to utilize, I would suggest going in for an internship more than anything else. Okay. Uh, working and, you know, studying about work are two different things. Working on ground will give you 10 times more exposure than any theoretical course will give you. So if you have time on your hands, always pick an internship, even if it's from a smaller-ish, smallish firm or some such, um, like go for it. Like get, get the skills. Even if it's not a brand that will stand out on your resume, you will come out from it uh, like a whole other person. So work is always better than you know having a theoretical sense. Of course, I see a lot of people doing like n number of courses from Harvard, from X mm-hmm. online courses, or Coursera, or whatnot. Helps if you, like if you want to get a theoretical understanding. But I would definitely put more weight on a person who has worked, who has done on ground stuff, and learned from it than someone who's like read about it. This person has four years of experience. So the, for before joining an IM, I already have four years of experience. Does that hamper my chances of getting into consulting at MBB. Big no, doesn't. Absolutely not. In four years of experience, if you've shown like a reasonable enough trajectory, in four years of experience, if you've done the same work in the four years, probably not. But if you've done like you've shown a trajectory, you like where you started off and year four, if you are, you know, a more senior person who's dealing with bigger problems, managing teams, if at all, definitely. Why not? Why not? We need that kind of experience. The next one is I work in. Uh risk consulting with a client facing job at a big four currently. So uh, do you think that kind of an experience is relevant for pursuing uh, management consulting? 
is but uh, management consulting in general like the kind of consulting mbbs do is slightly different from what the big fours do although like there there is some overlap and that overlap yeah can you also yeah can you tell us the difference yeah. also as well as as in uh, how different it is for mbb or the big fours and yeah. also uh, where is the overlap sure I think, and can uh, can one shift from like say one has been working in one of the big threes and then you know would like to shift maybe in yeah. one of the big fours is it possible to shift also yeah so yeah, sure. somewhere around that yeah i think big three to big four <laughs> yes other way around probably a little difficult <laughs> okay <laughs> all right so i think uh, if i had to like sort of in broad terms uh, like segregate the two we have a bunch of consulting opportunities like here in this part of the spectrum if you look at this tax risk financial audit and then there's management consulting right. as well so where the big four normally started from was from in this set of the spectrum with these four like they largely did niche consulting for like the clients the same clients that we work with so we normally coexist with the big four but off late like they have also started picking up implementation projects uh, and they they are dabbling into management consulting as well of course the major part of strategy and you know big picture questions and big problems that cxo space still remains with mbbs but i think uh, the big fours are picking up the implementation side of things if someone wants to shift from a big four to a big three definitely if you have that experience going for you uh, that shift does happen uh, but you need to again show a trajectory show that you've grown in your role uh, it's easier if you've done management consulting for a big we big four and to shift to a management consulting in a big three uh, right. if you've done risk got tax or audit like they're slightly more niche so i would give it a more holistic flavor like by doing an mba or maybe picking up a role that gives you exposure to like a wider set of industries and a wider set of skill sets so if you've been a uh, say an analyst in one of the big fours or for that matter if you've been an analyst in the company can you become uh, a management consultant In without an mba tough with an mba by all means great oh, okay this another one uh, our candidates with more experience say around 3 years in a tech role is at a disadvantage as opposed to others no absolutely no candidates in tech role who've done coding i think they all again have thought through problems have have seen their fair share of like analytical uh, challenges i think definitely not absolutely not somebody you know who has also got a very solid tech background they can also uh, and maybe a software and a it background probably yeah. it would be better for them to shift to what it consultancy or is it okay to no, no, try for management, management consulting? consulting as well you mm-hmm. can do management consulting as well provided again um, and that this is the bottom line on everything that is that we see on tvs in terms of management consulting is you need to have a trajectory you need to have shown some growth in the role that you worked with um and uh, so if you've been in a tech role for a while uh, and if you've shown that kind of trajectory and if you have tra- like maybe transition to a product management it definitely helps uh but yeah if it's been a core coding kind of role as well it could be something that you um uh, that might get you in oh. slightly difficult made okay. better with an mba obviously um and then of course uh, uh if you if you have a product management kind of profile and direct entry is also possible. you entered as a fresher in i am amrabad how was your experience there in the sense like how was your interview yeah. process and how did you and can you also tell us a little bit about your cat preparation there are quite a few questions about that up and <laughs> so i think cat was uh, cat was like i like i said a very organic kind of decision when i felt that you know i shouldn't restrict myself to a niche profession i started preparing for cat and uh, again like i said it was it, it was a journey for sure i prepared for it like for a good 6 months before i took the exam um but yeah definitely uh, uh I, that that's going to be a very long session now by the way like I, ims is the best like resource to guide you how to prepare for cat i think they are the pros in that direction and i definitely use their expertise maybe yeah you can talk about the the fresher bit uh yeah, i think that that's that, that's that would be yeah. more relevant right. so if we talk about like being a fresher at ima i think i there are two ways to think about it i think what i gained from ima was a lot because i started off with a very low base and you know i came in with very limited exposure to the industry no sense of like what the world out there is like Uh, so my delta at IMA was a lot because I got that business sense, that understanding of how organizations work. So a lot of it came from IMA. 
although i think if i if i look back and i think about it i think people who come in with like a little bit of work ex maybe a year and a half two years two and a half years or even slightly more if that works come in with a view to contribute to class learnings as well i think that's very important because if you work for two and a half years no matter what the sector no matter what the role you do have a, you do have an extra amount of learning that you have done you work with people you've dealt with your own set of challenges that you can talk about in the classroom and i think that really helps for learning mm-hmm. uh so yeah i think if someone has a choice to i went in as a fresher and i gained a lot out of it but whether i had something to contribute in return hmm, questionable so i think it's absolutely important that you like do that little bit of work ex in the beginning it it really like enriches your mba experience a lot more while you can get in as a fresher as well i did um because i felt it was the right decision for me but i think if you have that choice definitely go going with like a little bit of work ex that will help you how do we develop our business inside skill <laughs> Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Good question. I think uh, if you are developing it, of course, like business school is like the short answer to your question. But yeah, if you're developing it by yourself, why don't you start? I think well, we underestimate the power of reading uh, in our lives. Why don't you pick up like a few good business journals out there? There are multiple uh, opinion pieces that are written about the big businesses of the world every single day. Start there, I think. Start reading them. Start how they analyze business uh, situations from their perspective. Like, go out on Medium. Go out on I don't know, Ken if you have it, or Pocket, or any of these like uh, content websites. They really give you a sense of you know what businesses have done in the past, how have industries evolved. And that's where you start, and I think that really opens up your world. You look like oh, maybe browse through the business channel once or twice in a day. so start there i think that's how you develop it think and think and and you before you know it you'll you'll see you you're yourself thinking about those business problems and you could very well write a blog for those kind of content websites so start by reading and i think that that becomes like an organic right. push from there i'm a first year student at mdi gurgaon uh, does case competitions help to get prepared for summer and final placement interviews for management consultant roles and what competitions to look for specifically during the first year sure definitely help 100% they help uh because not just for your sake i think they you do give you exposure to the actually case experiences that you might see so it's a simulation of what you're going to uh see in terms of case experiences in a b school uh so definitely and also tells you tells a, a recruiter that you know you have tried uh, your best to get the maximum out of uh the two years that you've spent at b school like you gone out there prepared for things like delivered things thought, thought about as uh, so if if you have like four or five business competitions on your cv it automatically tells me that you spent the time to prepare for each of them and if you have national final then that means you were good as well so it definitely like contributes a lot to positioning uh and the second thing is uh what what case contest you pick i think pick ones that a interest you of course b i think pick ones that you think uh uh from from the point of view of like business challenges i think there are a lot of big firms that even came to ima with their case contest like mahindra and marico uh like ben kaiser or something so all of these firms do come in and uh, like i also picked a few from that list and i picked the up the one which i where i felt that you know as part of legacy case contest they have traditionally been one of the stronger ones like good teams participate in these case contests because they've been around for a while mm-hmm. so i think that's how i picked it but yeah definitely go for the problems which interest you the most student is uh, confused uh, between choosing marketing or consulting mm-hmm. can you help me to understand the differentiating line Yeah. consulting is a big big gamut like i i said it's it's business problems right from you know how do i start a business to how i run it to how i think about organization how i think about marketing is a just a very small part of it but within marketing i think it's again a big world out there but it's a big world restricted to a set of uh problems that we solve is basically how do you communicate that you are the best company out there for a product or a service right so i think in terms of like raw skill sets uh if you are a person uh, for consulting i've already said it, but but in marketing i think if you are a person who likes to ideate from scratch if you have that innovation 
uh, kind of gene like that clicks when you see certain product right. i think that's the kind of that's the kind of skill set that's needed there you can like you you i give you a whiteboard and you'll do something out of it i think definitely like if you are that person go for marketing i'm currently working as a business intelligence consultant for a firm which provides it business consulting will this experience count relevant when i sit for placements for companies like bain or mckinsey post mba 100% any day any day like without a doubt unequivocally yes business experience of any kind helps which uh, like whatever sector or whatever profession or whatever role you are in just do it well i think it really counts for a lot if you would just like to you know to sum it up if if uh, someone would like to be a management consultant and uh, like what are the skills mm-hmm. uh, and what are the, what is the kind of aptitude and uh, what are the kind of things that they can work on right yeah. now uh, while they are preparing also for cat uh, mm-hmm. any suggestion like you know just yeah. to sum it up i think the one thing that really helps in that direction is if you um i think do whatever you're doing but do it to the best of your ability like if you're a student like be the best student that there is if you are working at a tech firm like really code well i don't know if you're working at so i think whatever you're supposed to do whatever your is your core sort of like it could be a job it could be your education but do it really well like like show for it because at the end of the day i think there are a limited number of hours that you have and if you if you are not doing the kind of job that you were supposed to do oh. that, that really like is a dampener in that direction so just like do whatever you're doing really well and like be very open to things i think be open to trying things because uh we really get stuck in this one linear progression of oh you study study studies and then this job 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 i think or be open to things in life and say oh you know i i'm i'm in a college i'm just going to like do the next election i what, what happens if i lose you know but i'm just going to canvas myself i'm just going to like go talk to 100 people figure out that's a great experience to have so i think be on the lookout for these small opportunities in life that will really make you a better person that will really make you a better professional at the end of the day so in terms of like raw skills i have told you like it's analytic like an analytically strong bent of mind a great excellence and a continued excellence that you've shown in life but it also helps if you've picked up a few things along the way and you are have made them a part of your life and you show that ability to you know see things through to their fruition i think that's extremely extremely important if you want to be a management consultant and of course like business sense like i said to start reading stuff i think we really underestimate the importance of reading we are on our phones day in and day out we are not reading the right things so just pick up your phone have a few good uh the website that you see every day have a few good avenues where you not just read opinions but maybe start writing as well really help structure your thought process a lot right and start doing that i think it's really really important there's no one right answer to how you become a management consultant especially in this professional you know one question where there are 20 different profiles that have succeeded or maybe more than that as well uh, and they've all come from different trajectories but the one thing that runs and a common thread across that direction is that they have they have excelled at whatever they've done and uh, they have excelled at whatever they've picked up so have those two three things in your life and i think definitely management consulting should be a great profession just one last question uh, from one of the attendees um if you can take it uh, i heard a consulting offers a wide range of experiences can that domain help in starting my own business after working as a consultant or should we look for other domains like general management and then go for business <laughs> if there is a domain that can help you start your own business i think consulting comes second to none to be very honest it's the best best starting point out there for you to start your own business if you're thinking about it us dipinder goel he's managing zometo right now started in vain i think at some point right. Uh, and there are a lot of other ex bainies out there who have built there's delivery there's so many startups out there that have started from bain people who were at bain at some point right. and bain right. like actively encourages people to pick up entrepreneurship as well and like definitely gives you the skill sets for it so if there is a profession that can make you an entrepreneur trust me consulting is it is 
this is all uh, we have for today for this episode and i hope you know we have uh, answered most of your questions and most of the important questions before we wrap up i would like to thank all of you attendees and also our speaker uh, gursimran ahuja thank you yeah, so pleasure. much it has been a pleasure to listen to all the insights that you had about uh, management consulting and i hope you know everybody has kind of got their bearing on what exactly is management consulting so this is kalyani majumdar from ims future you wishing you a great weekend stay home and stay safe good day thank you thank you dan